Hello, and thank you for joining us for Hylion's third quarter 2024 earnings call. Today, I am joined by our CFO, John Panzer. Over the past quarter, we've made substantial strides on the road to commercialization of the Carnot generator, and I'm excited to share key updates as we approach the start of early adopter customer deliveries in the coming week. Today, I'll cover our progress on development, early deployments, and our commercialization plans, the growing market interest we're seeing, especially from the data center sector, and additional details on our recent Office of Naval Research contract. To start, I'd like to provide an update on our product development progress. I'm pleased to announce that we've achieved the second to last milestone in our commercialization timeline, completing beta development work for the 200 kilowatt Carno generator. With this phase finished, the beta generator and its components have now moved to the testing and validation stage as we prepare for early adopter customer deliveries. Over the past year of testing the Carnot generator, we've seen promising results that highlight its high efficiency, fuel flexibility, and low emissions. These qualities align closely with the needs of customers in our target markets and we believe they will differentiate the Carnot generator from other power generation solutions in the industry. In both our Cincinnati and Austin facilities, we're currently manufacturing components, running our additive manufacturing printers 24 seven, and are receiving parts from vendors to kick off the assembly of the first generators. The key takeaway here is that while we still have further testing and validation steps to complete in the coming weeks, we plan to deliver a couple of customer units before the end of the year. Our plan is to produce about a dozen early adopter units. Initially, we had planned that all early adopter units would be deployed in the field at customer sites. However, some of these early units will initially be deployed at our facility to perform customer-specific requirements testing before being moved to their final location, while others will go directly to customer sites in 2025. As we've mentioned in previous calls, the goal of the early deployment unit is to integrate Carnot generators into various customer use cases to showcase their performance. We will closely monitor the performance of these units, provide immediate operational support, and make any necessary adjustments to ensure the technology is ready to scale. As noted previously, revenue recognition for units will occur once we've confirmed that the generators meet design specifications including key performance criteria in line with the terms of sale. Starting at the end of this year and going through the first half of next year, we'll deliver early adopter units and incorporate insights gained from their operation into design modifications and enhancements for future units. This iterative process is essential to ensuring we deliver the highest quality products to our customers. As we continue scaling production, we expect commercial deployments to begin around mid-2025. This approach allows us to incorporate any feedback and necessary fixes identified from early adopter deployments into the system before we officially commercialize the 200 kilowatt Carnot generator and begin recognizing revenue on sales starting sometime around mid-2025. Shifting now to some significant recent accomplishments, I'm excited to highlight our contract win with the U.S. Office of Naval Research for up to $16 million, announced earlier in the quarter. Through this collaboration, we'll be working with the Navy to explore the Carnot generator's potential for use in naval vessels and stationary power applications. This contract includes the sale of up to seven Carnot generator systems which the Navy will deploy in various environments to validate the generator's unique performance characteristics. Key attributes like fuel flexibility, low noise, and low maintenance align closely with the Navy's operational objectives, supporting their goal of identifying advanced power solutions for future vessels. I'm also pleased to share a new development in our business strategy. With the addition of the new Office of Naval Research contract, we will now begin recognizing revenue from R&D services as part of our core business services, along with the development and sale of Carnot generators. Including this contract, along with two earlier government awarded agreements, we expect the total value of our R&D services 
and Carnot generator sales with the Office of Naval Research in the future periods will be up to $17.2 million. This will enable us to begin recognizing revenue from these and future R&D contracts starting in Q4. We're enthusiastic about this partnership with the Office of Naval Research and believe we have considerable potential for similar contracts in the future, both within the military and across other sectors that stand to benefit from our technology. We also recently announced a successful demonstration of the Carnot generator operating seamlessly on multiple fuel sources. The test began with natural gas, then shifted to a nitrogen-rich syngas, and finally transitioned through various mixtures of hydrogen and natural gas. This demonstration highlights the generator's unique capability to adapt to different fuel sources mid-operation, offering unmatched flexibility. This adaptability is particularly beneficial for customers in sectors like renewable fuels and oil and gas, where fuel composition may vary during operation. Now turning to some exciting market updates, I'm pleased to report that we have secured letters of intent that exceed the number of units we plan to ship in 2025. We expect to deliver several dozen units over the course of the year, aligning with our previously shared guidance of achieving low double-digit millions in revenue next year. This early interest highlights the strong demand and market confidence in the Carnot generator's potential to transform power generation across multiple industries. Please note that these letters of intent are non-binding and subject to the execution of definitive sales agreements. A few weeks ago, we also signed an LOI with ANA Incorporated, a leader in mobile industrial equipment, to pilot the deployment of up to six Carnot generators in mobile power rental applications. We expect that this partnership will provide us with a strategic entry into the rental power generation market allowing us to accelerate adoption with an established industry leader. ANA plans to start their initial deployment of the Carnot generator in 2025 after the parties execute a definitive agreement. In recent quarters, we've seen increased interest in the Carnot generator from the data center sector. The rapid growth of cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and data analytics is driving demand for more data centers each requiring substantial power. The Carnot generator aligns well with the industry needs, offering a dispatchable power generation solution that delivers high reliability while meeting strict emission standards. Our generator can serve as both a primary and backup power source, ensuring uninterrupted operations, a critical requirement for data centers. Power demands at data centers in development usually range from 20 megawatts for smaller facilities to over 100 megawatts for large-scale centers, equivalent to deploying 100 200 kilowatt Carnot generators on the low end and more than 500 for larger sites. This scale is like customers to request an accelerated timeline for our 2 megawatt Carnot generator system. We plan to begin development of this system early next year with the first units expected to be available in 2026. One major advantage of the Carnot generator is its modular design. Each two megawatt system contains 10 200 kilowatt four shaft arrays integrated into a single operating unit to achieve higher power levels. These generators can operate together or independently, providing flexible power output to meet diverse demand. Lastly, we announced this past quarter that the Carnot generator now qualifies under California's Renewable Portfolio Standard. This qualification is a major milestone as it opens new opportunities within California, a leader in renewable energy adoption and emissions reduction. The RPS legislation requires utilities to source a portion of their electricity from renewable sources and the Carnot generator's capability to operate on renewable fuels like hydrogen and biofuels make it an attractive option for utilities and other organizations aiming to meet these requirements. To meet demand, we've been rapidly expanding our additive manufacturing capabilities in Austin. Over the past six months, we've grown our fleet of additive print machines with additional units scheduled for delivery through the second half of next year. 
In the coming weeks, we expect to take delivery of our first M-Line production printers from Calibrium Additive, a GE Aerospace company. These advanced printers, specifically designed for volume manufacturing, will significantly support our scale-up by providing more lasers, a larger print area, and enhanced production capacity. In parallel, we're working to improve the throughput of our existing machines, consolidating prints for greater efficiency, and reducing the number of additive parts by transitioning select, less complex components to conventional manufacturing. Together, these efforts aim to increase production capacity while also reducing system costs. In conclusion, we continue to make excellent progress on multiple fronts, product development, market engagement, and strategic growth initiatives. All of this culminates with initial deliveries beginning in the coming weeks, followed by a commercial launch and production ramp up in 2025. With that, I'll now hand the call over to John to cover our financial results and outlook. Thank you, Thomas, and good morning, everyone. Operating expenses for the third quarter were 14.2 million, flat with the second quarter of this year and down compared to the $33.3 million in the third quarter of 2023. This decrease in expenses are related to the wind down of our powertrain business, partly offset by an increase in Carno spending this year. During the quarter, we recorded a $929,000 credit in powertrain exit and termination expenses, which was driven by the sale of certain assets of the discontinued powertrain business, partly offset by ongoing shutdown costs. Our total net loss in the third quarter was $11.2 million, about flat compared to the second quarter, but down from $30.3 million in the third quarter of 2023. Year-to-date operating expenses totaled $47.2 million compared to $103.7 million in the first three quarters of 2023. Expenses in 2024 include $2.9 million of powertrain exit and termination costs, net of asset sale gains. As we noted last quarter, the wind down of powertrain is mostly complete, except we do expect to continue to realize income and cash in the coming quarters from the sale of assets. As of early May, we suspended our share repurchases due to the recent strengthening of our share price and do not expect to execute upon further repurchases but may resume repurchasing activity at a later date if and as deemed appropriate. Since program inception, we repurchased 10.6 million shares for an aggregate cost of $14 million, resulting in an average purchase price of $1.32. Turning to our cash and investment position, we spent $11 million during the third quarter, net of asset sales and interest income. Year-to-date, Cash use was $62 million, including previously restricted cash. We finished the third quarter with $238 million of cash and investments on our balance sheet. Breaking down uses of cash and investments for the years thus far, spending on core carnal development activities totaled about $39 million, including capital investments of $10.5 million. Capital investments were directed mostly towards the purchase of additive printing machines and related equipment. In addition to the $14 million spent on share repurchases, we also spent approximately $9 million on powertrain shutdown activities, net of asset sale proceeds. We expect that Carnal operating expenses, excluding powertrain exit and termination costs, will grow slightly in the fourth quarter compared to the third quarter, and that capital spending will be a little higher than the run rate so far this year due to faster deliveries of additive printers in Texas. For the full year, we continue to expect that total cash expenditures for our Carno generator business in 2024 will be approximately $55 million. As a reminder, our cash forecast includes operating expenses, capital spending, and interest income, but excludes cash spent for share repurchases, powertrain shutdown activities, and asset sale proceeds. Note also that this forecast could fluctuate up or down based upon the timing of printer deliveries between now and the end of the year. As Thomas mentioned earlier, we expect to begin recognizing revenue from R&D services in the fourth quarter of this year 
and to ramp up Carno generator deployments with early adopter customers in the first quarter of 2025. While these will be paid deployments, the timing of the payments to Hylion and the recognition of payments as revenue will be subject to the terms of sale and the timing of Carno generator commercialization. These terms include certification and permitting of the generator, as well as achievement of operating performance criteria. We currently expect commercialization of the generator to occur sometime around mid-2025. For the fourth quarter of this year, we expect to realize revenue of less than $1 million related to research and development activities. We are maintaining previous guidance that we expect revenue in 2025 to be in the low double-digit millions of dollars, including for R&D services. Initially, we expect gross margins to be negative, but also to improve quickly as we realize scale efficiencies in production and purchasing. We are currently targeting gross margins to be approximately break-even measured on a cash basis by late 2025 or early 2026. Beyond that time frame, we haven't yet developed a firm forecast. Finally, we continue to expect that capital we have on hand today will be sufficient for the foreseeable future, including commercialization of Carnot generator sales. Now I'll turn the call back over to Thomas. Thank you, John. Before we open the call to questions, I'd like to reiterate our excitement about the quarters ahead and the future beyond that. We've seen the need for more power and demand for distributed generation solutions significantly increase over the past year. With our unique technology and the growing market interest, we believe Hylion is well positioned to play a pivotal role in this energy transition. Operator, we can now open the call for questions. 